Hello, my dear students. I hope you all are well. So, welcome to another class on history of English language. So, we have already covered uh, the features of Old English um, grammar, dialects, spelling, and pronunciation. Uh, now, we'll go forward with uh, the foreign influence on Old English. How foreign languages have influenced Old English during that period. Uh, let's start with Celtic invasion. So I have provided a, a picture of the Celtic tribes. I don't know who drew this picture, but I thought it would be a wonderful addition to this video. So let's look at Celtic influence. So Celtic is actually the original language of Britain. Britain le original language of Britain is Celtic. But then... Um, the island of uh, the Britain, uh, Great Britain on the island, it was actually inhabited by Celtic population. And then there was a conquest made on the Celtic po population by Angles, Saxons and Jutes. It must have resulted in a corresponding mis mixture of their languages. So Celtic language and uh, this new Anglo-Saxon language might have mixed together. But we can see that uh, a lot large number of Celtics were exterminated during this Anglo-Saxon conquest and only a few Celtic words have survived in Old English. But Celtic is the original language of the Celtic words in Old English. So, sorry, uh, these Celts were a submerged race. After this conquest, Celts were submerged. So, their influence on English language was also Almost negligible. But we can see Celtic influence in the names of places like Devonshire, Cornwall, Cumberland, London, Winchester, Salisbury, Gloucester and Worcester. So all these place names, they come from the Celtic root. Then they, we have names of rivers like Thames, Avon, Dover, Y, D, Esk. These all the names of these rivers are taken from the original Celtic language. And then there are some uh, places which ends in comb. Comb in Celtic language means a deep valley. Uh, Celtic language is a comb in the comb. A deep valley. A thalvar in the comb. There are names like Duncomb, Holdcomb, etc. Even if you look at Malayalam uh, names of places, uh, places in Kerala. We have a lot of names which ends in Kund, Mala. If you have geographical features, we have to say that Adi Mala, Paravan Kund, we have to say that 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 we have to which means a deep valley. Exactly like that, there is another word, Tor, which meant high rock or peak. We can see this in uh, place names like Tor, Tor Cross, Tor Hill, etc. So the Celtic influence on Old English is very limited, only in the names of places, rivers, etc. It is because very few Celtic words have survived in Old English. Because after the Anglo-Saxon conquest, only a few Celts remained. But those who remained were a submerged race. Even their language was submerged. Okay, let's move on to Latin influence. Now, this is a painting of Julius Caesar, Caesar arriving in Britain. Okay. So, regarding Latin, we can note that there are three distinct occasions on which borrowing from Latin occurred before the end of Old English period. So, Old English period is in the English words So there were three distinct occasions before the end of Old English period where English has borrowed words from Latin. Let's look at the first occasion or the first phase. This was before the Anglo-Saxons came to England. So before Anglo-Saxon conquest. Before Anglo-Saxon conquest, England had various relations with Romans, trade relations and all. 
so through these relations they acquired a considerable number of latin words related to agriculture war and trade appo anglo saxons varunadinu munbu thanne avade undayirunna aalukalum adhaayathu celtic population um romans um thammile oru bandham undayirunnu aa bandhathilude oru vaad words latin il ninnu english like eduthittund these were words related to agriculture war and trade so we know what kind of relationship they had it's mostly trade relationship so we have words like wine flask kettle kitchen cup cheese butter onion mint linen church bishop etc so this was a first phase this is before anglo saxons came to england when the celtics had various relations relations with romans and the, in this phase they acquired a considerable number of latin words okay let's move on to the next phase the second phase <clears throat> this was when the teutons came to england when the anglo saxons came to england so when they came to england they came in contact with the celtic population there so the celtic population were already using some latin words <clears throat> which they acquired during the first phase or, or during the long roman rule in the island so they also borrowed these words indirectly from latin through celts so what happened is uh, anglo saxons england le vanna samayathu avade undayirna celtic population avaru already korche latin words ok samsarikkunnu undayirunnu appo avaril ninnu indirect aayittu ആംഗ്ലോ സാക്സൺസ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലേക്ക് ലാറ്റിൻ വേർഡ്സ് കടമെടുത്തു ത്രൂ കെൽറ്റിക് പോപ്പുലേഷൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് വേർഡ്സ് വർ ബോറോഡ് ബൈ ട്യൂട്ടൻസ് ഓർ ആംഗ്ലോ സാക്സൺസ് ദാറ്റ് വാസ് എ സെക്കൻഡ് ഫേസ് അപ്പോൾ എൻ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് കോൺട്രിബ്യൂഷൻ ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദിസ് ഫേസ് വാസ് ദ ലാറ്റിൻ വേർഡ് കാസ്ട്ര കാസ്ട്ര മീൻസ് ക്യാമ്പ് പാളയം തമ്പ് എന്നൊക്കെയുള്ള ഒരു അർത്ഥമാണ് സോ ദിസ് വാസ് ആക്ച്വലി borrowed into old english during the second phase and this resulted in a number of place names like chester manchester winchester lancaster gloucester etc so all these words have the root castra in them castra means camp that was an important word which was borrowed in the second phase let's move on to the third phase now so third phase is the greatest um, phase actually the biggest or most influential phase of latin on old english because this was on the occasion of the introduction of christianity into britain in 597 ad so christianity was introduced in britain in 597 ad because of this a large number of latin words were borrowed into old english so these were mostly words related to christianity like church bishop etc these were already in existence church bishop polulla words already avare nerthe ulla phases le borrow cheythu kaynu but then there were a majority of words related to church and its services which were borrowed during the third phase let's look at some words abbot arms altar angel anthem candle canon deacon nun disciple epistle hymn martyr mass offer organ psalm pope priest uh, palm shrine temple prophet sabbath etc so these were some of the words which were borrowed um, in this during the third phase these were words related to christianity and church and then a large number of words were as i mentioned they were borrowed uh, words related to domestic like life like cap soak silk mat so veedumayittu bandhapetta words words related to domestic life then there were words denoting food food items uh, like radish pear millet oyster lobster cabbage etc these were all borrowed from latin and then we can add the names of trees plants and herbs like box pine aloe balsam cedar cypress fig hyssop lily myrrh and the general word plant itself was borrowed from latin during the third phase 
and then there were certain number of words related to education and learning because a lot of learning was done due to the influence of the church so words which were borrowed from latin because of that reason was school master verse etc so we have come to the end of latin influence latin influence as i mentioned there were three different occasions on which borrowing from latin into old english was made possible before the end of old english period first phase was before anglo saxons came to england celtics had tra uh, trade relations with romans and because of this relation a number of words were borrowed from latin the second phase was when teutons came to england they came into contact with the celtic population living there who were already using some latin words so indirectly they borrowed from some latin words third phase was during the introduction of christianity into britain in 597 ad a large number of words related to christianity and church were borrowed and then words related to domestic life food names of trees plants and herbs education and learning these were all borrowed during this phase let's look at scandinavian influence on old english so this is actually the viking uh, invasion this is a picture of viking invasion um on england or or on britain let's see how scandinavian influence comes so a uh, scandinavian influence like angles saxons and jutes they invaded britain and this resulted in a settlement of large number of scandinavians in england appo england la scandinavian influence kaaranam avide ivide aayittu oru vaada scandinavian tribes settle cheyidu and most of these new inhabitants were danes from uh, they were danes okay and then uh, the, uh, some were also norwegian okay from norway and denmark these people were set, uh, settling in different parts of england or, or britain especially in the north west places like Cum cumbria and a few other northern counties so they were mostly settled in north west appa or island in the north west bhagathaitana is scandinavia il ninnu vanna invaders pala pala settlements aayittu thamasichirunna especially danes and norwegians and then what happened there were already people living in britain at that point of time these people came into contact with the scandinavians they these two people amalgamated because there were intermarriages all kinds of relationships between these two kinds of people and um this resulted in a new kind of vocabulary or language uh and these new inhabitants were mostly bilingual they talked the language of the island and also the scandinavian languages so because of these intermarriages and all many scandinavian words were transferred into english vocabulary appo scandinavian influence kaaranam ivide vanna avaru settle eedu ee deshakkar aayittulla avare vivaham kelichu pattu pala relations um avaru thammil undayi angane oru bilingual aayittulla oru പീരിയഡ് ആയിരുന്നു ആൾക്കാർ ഭയങ്കര ബൈലിംഗ്വൽ ആയിരുന്നു രണ്ട് ഭാഷയും സംസാരിക്കുമായിരുന്നു അങ്ങനെ ഒരു പീരിയഡിൽ ഇഷ്ടംപോലെ സ്കാൻഡിനേവിയൻ വേർഡ്സ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് വൊക്കാബുലറിയിലേക്ക് കടന്നുകൂടി സൊ ലെറ്റ്സ് ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് ദ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് മെത്തേഡ്സ് ഇൻ വിച്ച് സ്കാൻഡിനേവിയൻ ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ ഇൻ ഓൾഡ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ ഇൻ ദ നെയിംസ് ഓഫ് പ്ലേസസ് ദർ ആർ സം പ്ലേസസ് വിച്ച് എൻഡ് ഇൻ ബി ബി വൈ ഇൻ സ്കാൻഡിനേവിയൻ ബി ബി മീൻസ് ഫാം ഓർ ടൗൺ ബി മീൻസ് ഫാം ഓർ town there are place names like grimsby whitby darby rugby thorsby etc these are all of scandinavian origin and nearly all of them were occupied by danes at one point of time then let's look at the scandinavian word top top means village and we have many place names in britain like althorp bishop top go top linthorp etc gram ennallo oru artham aanu village then we have this word thwaite thwaite means an isolated piece of land thwaite means an isolated piece of land and then we have place names like apple thwaite braithwaite cooper thwaite lang thwaite satter thwaite etc so mainly in the names of places so and then there are number of words a number of place names ending in toft toft also means a piece of ground we have place names like brimtoft eastoft langtoft lowstoft northtoft etc 
So basically, how you can see the in Scandinavian influences in the names of places. Place names ending in by, top, thwait, toft, etc. And then we can see Scandinavian influence in personal names too. Like na there are names ending in son, like Stevenson and Johnson. This was actually a Scandinavian custom. Mone vilikinada, oralda mone vilikinada, John in the mone amo, Johnson. If he is John's son, he is Johnson. That, that was his second name or something. So, uh, surnames, usually surnames were added by the father's name, like this. So, in a son, Chertatula surname, our Scandinavian language and the influence on. And then there were many words re related to sea roving and predatory people. Because Scandinavians were particularly sailors. They were sailors and they were also, they were also quite predatory in nature. There were words like vessel, fleet, pirate, warrior, boatman, chief, battle, robbery, rapine, etc. Though so, all these words may, mainly related to sea roving, sailing and some words are really violent too. That shows what kind of relationship English people had with Scandinavians. Kind of a violent and bloody relationship. And then there are words related to law and social and administrative system. There are words like law, outlaw etc. These are all taken from Scandinavian. And then Danes began to settle very peacefully in the island. A large number of words began to enter into the language. So we can divide these large number of words which entered into the language into nouns, adjectives and verbs. Let's look at the nouns. Axle, tree, band, bank, birth, boon, booth, brink, bull, calf, calf of the leg, crook, Dirt, Degs, Egg, Fellow, Freckle, Gate, Gap, Girth, Guess, Hap, Kill, Kid, Leg, Link, Lone, Mire, Race, Reef, Reindeer, Rift, Root, Scab, Scales, Score, Scrap, Seat, Sister, Skin, Sorry, Skill, Skin, Skirt, Sky, Slaughter, Snare, Stack, Stake, Thrift, Tidings, trust, want, window, etc. These are some important nouns which were borrowed from Scandinavian languages. Let's look at adjectives. Awkward, flat, ill, loose, low, meek, muggy, odd, rotten, rugged, scant, seemly, slight, tattered, uh, tight and weak. And some verbs are bait, bask, call, cast, clip, Cow, crave, crawl, die, droop, egg on, flit, gape, gasp, get, give, glitter, kindle, lift, lug, nag, race, rake, ransack, rid, rive, scare, scout, scowl, screech, snub, sprint, take, thrive, trust. So these are some nouns, adjectives and verbs which were borrowed from Scandinavian language when the Danes finally began to settle down peaceably in the island. So this brings us to the end of the class. So I'll once again uh, recap Scandinavian influence. Uh, so basically during the Scandinavian in invasions, a large number of people, Scandinavians were uh, settled down in different parts of England. Mostly from Danes and Norwegians in northwest of England, especially in places like Cumbria. And these two people amalgamated. There were a lot of intermarriages. They were people were bilingual, and many Scandinavian words were transferred to English vocabulary. Mainly names of places ending in by, top, thwait, toft, etc., and personal names ending in son. And uh, words related to sea roving and predatory people, words related to law and social life, and nouns, adjectives, and uh, verbs. So, this has brought, brought us to the end of the class. So, I hope this was beneficial for you. I want you to go back and listen to the class very ardently for better results. And once again, I'm reminding you that you don't have to learn all these words. I've given you a big list of words. You don't have to learn every single word. But just make sure that you have learned at least a few of them. 
so that has finally brought us to the end of the class and thank you so much for your attention uh, have a good day thank you